Hey guys, I'm Vignesh and welcome back to my YouTube channel Cloud and AI Analytics. Hope everyone are doing good. So in today's video, uh, we are going to see another SQL database product in Google Cloud Platform called Cloud Spanner. So previously in, pre in previous video, we understood what is Cloud SQL, what are the pros and cons of Cloud SQL and how to uh, load bulk data in Cloud SQL. All those things we were we saw it as part of previous video. So in today's video, we will be seeing what is Cloud Spanner and how it, Cloud Spanner is differed from Cloud SQL. What are the pros and what are the cons of uh, Cloud Spanner when compared with uh, Cloud SQL and what is the uh, important features that Cloud Spanner has and how it is built by Google. So all those things we will be seeing in this video. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the first thing is Cloud Spanner. So Cloud Spanner is a uh, fully managed scalable relational database service delivers high performance transactions and strong consistency for regional and global that is multi-regional application data so it is fully managed by google cloud platform and it is scalable so it can scale from regional and even it can scale up to, uh, even we can scale it for multi-region that is global region as well and it also follows relational database services with uh, delivers high performance transactions and strong consistency so the consistency is also strong across regional and global so spanner is a managed sql complaint database so it is uh, managed by google cloud platform and it's a complaint database it doesn't uh, uh, it is not similar to mysql or postgresql so it can be used as a drop in replacement for those engines so if you are bringing that cloud C cloud spanner right you can uh, drop this mysql or postgres as a database engine also and cloud spanner is the first global scalable globally distributed and strong consistent database service built for the cloud specifically to combine benefits of relational database structure with non-relational horizontal scale so in this point uh, we already know cloud spanner is a scalable globally distributed and strongly consistent database it's a uh, relational database but with the uh, with the power of non-relational horizontal scale it can scale uh, to different nodes so there are two types of scaling one is vertical scaling and horizontal scaling so in cloud spanner we will be using uh, horizontal scaling whereas in cloud sql we'll be using vertical scaling so again vertical scaling and the difference between vertical scaling and the horizontal scaling is vertical scaling uh, it will uh, increase the compute engine size for example for uh, if you are using a cloud sql of or uh, cloud sql with eight eight uh, eight cpu uh, with 8 gb ram and if you wanted to increase the power now we can we can increase it from 8 to 16 or according to our requirement whereas in horizontal scaling instead of increasing the power of uh, that particular node uh, particular service or particular instance we will add multiple similar uh, services to that so for example if you are using 8 gpus ram right so similarly if we wanted to scale we can scale, we can add multiple nodes of similar mission configuration so we can add 8 gb uh, 8 gb 8 gb 8 gb to all our uh, uh, according to our scalable or according to our network so this is what and it is an, uh, mostly horizontal scale which comes with a non or relational database so that power is it is present inside this cloud spanner so the next thing is as i said earlier it's a fully managed and a mission critical application and whenever the data is greater than 2 tb then we will be using this but we will go with this particular uh, service highly scalable and even it scale up to petabyte also just like cloud sql must define schema database so here we will be uh, defining the schema database the same way we used to define it in uh, uh, cloud sql so spanner is nothing but the combination of cloud sql plus horizontal scale and data export so if you wanted to export data you can do it from uh, uh, using cloud console or cloud data flow in this thing we we can't use g cloud command for exporting or uh, importing data so you can't export data with g cloud so you can use only cloud console or cloud data flow and spanner with replica right uh, it is available the availability is 99 point nine nine percentage that is five nines so if this is the case uh, in a year the this particular service will be down for only five seconds so this is how the availability is uh, promised by google cloud platform to the vendors like us so and it is uh, uh, and it provides an enterprise level great security as well 
So do you think this 99.99 percentage it is really achievable in Cloud Spanner? Yeah, that is achievable and that is achieved using a concept called Cap Theorem. So the Cap Theorem was formulated by Eric Brewer, states that is a distributed system that stores data. There are three fundamental principles. So it stores data on the basics of three fundamental principles. That is C stands for consistency, A stands for availability and P stands for partition tolerance. So as we know already what is consistency. So consistency means database transactions must only change data according to the specific rules. So whatever the data is or whatever the quantity or the volume of data is. So uh, it will change only according to that specific set of rules which we have already defined it. So in the context of spanner we can put in this way in the context of spanner it refers to the strong consistency of a right transaction taking effort before the data can be read from anywhere in the system. So uh, whatever I said earlier right so we can uh, we can change uh, with the context of spanner. So it refers to strong consistency of a right transaction taking effort before that data can be read from anywhere in the system. So the next thing is availability. Availability is nothing but uh, how, how our service is available to all our queries. So how it is available to serve our queries all those things. And the third thing is partition tolerance. Partition tolerance means the distributed system needs to be tolerant of the loss of any partitions of its total system. Even though there is some downtime or even though there is some uh, disturbances like how our service will tolerate them and it will uh, it will tolerate some part of that loss. So those things will we can uh, do it as part of this partition tolerance. More simply, it needs to tolerate failure, failure if a part of it goes offline unexpectedly. So it can uh, tolerate even some part goes offline also unexpectedly. So this is the three parts: consistency, availability, and partition. So the cap spanner, like uh, not cap spanner, like cloud spanner, it gives strong consistent. It is highly available and choose consistency over availability. The cloud spanner it always choose consistency over availability and it is uh, uh, it is supported by Google private network and that because of Google private network on the strong engineering team implemented by Google cloud that is why we are getting five nines of availability that is 99.99 percent and now we will see some cool features of uh, cloud spanner. So as we know already like it is an horizontally scalable uh, it scales from rows or it can scale data in region or even from continent also from one to hundreds or thousands of nodes. We will see what is this while we are implementing it practically. The next thing is as we saw now it is fully managed and it supports uh, relational database like ACID transactions, SQL queries and relational database schemas and Cloud Spanner is supported in multiple languages. And the libraries or client libraries or C sharp go Java node.js PHP Python and Ruby and even you can use JDBC driver for connectivity with popular third-party tools you can use JDBC driver for connecting with the third-party tools and this all these things we already saw in it like uh, the consistency the availability all those things on the security level data layer encryption and the roles IAM roles integration for access and controls and audit logging so cloud spanner is uh, different from uh, mysql but if you are familiar with oracle sql you can find uh, some similar with the queries on uh, um, it you can see some similarities to oracle sql so that's it for this theory part now let's get our hands dirty when while stepping into that google cloud console so this is my Google Cloud Console and I'm in this project learn GCP PDE. Now we wanted to open Spanner Cloud Spanner. So click on this navigation menu and go go here under database. So under databases you can see Cloud Spanner. So Cloud Spanner and Cloud SQL are the relational databases. Rest all the other memory store, fire store, data store, big table, all those are comes under NoSQL databases. We will be seeing all those things in the upcoming sessions. Uh, now we will be seeing what is cloud spanner so click on this cloud spanner so this is the instance we have to create instance this is how the home page for cloud spanner looks like so the symbol is three spanners one is for the cap theorem consistency availability and the partition tolerance so this is the main uh, reason why uh, the logo of cloud spanner is like this the cap theorem it represents one 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 spanner represents one one uh, feature of that cap theorem so if you wanted to create instance just click on this create instance 
and give that instance name learn jcp iphone pde and choose configuration uh, this compare region like you you can go with regional or multi regional this is purely based on the uh, based on our business requirements so for now i'll go with regional and for asia east one it is 0.90 dollar similarly for asia south one it is 1.26 dollar per hour so we have to go, we'll go with this uh, lowest one since 0.90 per hour so it has 99.99 percent availability and replica assist it it has three rewrite replicas in three separate zones within the region asia east one so what does it means is in asia east one this is a region so inside this region we will be having three different zones asia east one a asia east one b and asia east one c all the three will be rewrite replicas so if we choose multiple region then we will see what is the case so asia one it has three regions tokyo and osako and seoul similarly european three uh, europe five europe six and asia one asia three so if you see there are totally one two three four five six uh, region allocated to this uh, multi-region allocated this multi-region and uh, nam 10 nam 11 so all those things north america a name means i guess it's north america europe and asia so if you see asia tokyo one it has three different regions tokyo osako seoul and it is 3.9 dollar per hour and two re replica in asia northeast one tokyo default reader region so default will be tokyo and two re write replicas in asia north one and one witness replica in asia northeast three seoul so it will the cost will vary according to, according to the different regions so if i click this again you can see that availability is 99.99 percentage and three dollars per hour and if i choose north america something and uh, totally there are five seven regions and the availability is 99 and five dollars per hour so according to the region it will get changed so we have to choose it wisely and uh, zero down panel and for now i'll be using this regional and the maximum storage is 4 tb and processing units nodes so if you see your compute capacity determines the amount of data throughput queries per second ops sorry qps and storage limit in your instance one node equal to thousand processing units so we will be using one node and the quantity will be one so here we can see all the details if you wanted how to quick start the documentation for these pages you can take a look at it uh, now we'll create uh, now we'll create this instance so the default region the default point is always our compute engine you know, when we are creating any compute uh, sorry cloud spanner instance the availability the cpu utilization should be less than 65 percentage then only we can uh, our cloud spanner will work effectively with low latency and high availability all those things if that cpu utilization is more than 65 percentage then obviously we have to either increase our nodes <coughs> or uh, we have to uh, we can see that our no you see um, cloud spanner is not it will have some uh, uh, errors also um, not error there will be some disturbance in the performance so that is why it is always advisable to keep the cpu utilization less than 16 65 percentage so this is the overview page we have created one instance so now we will be creating the database for the database we will come here i will go through this so we will create one spanner instance and we will make sure whether cloud spanner api is got enabled or not in my project uh, I have enabled the cloud spanner API and I recommend you before creating any instance you should also uh, enable this cloud spanner API so I have already enabled it in my project so this is already enabled in my project and we will be creating two table uh, patient table appointment table and our data name is hospital DB and we will be using Google standard SQL so as i told you earlier like uh, we can use postgres sql also and we can use google standard sql this google standard sql is and it's it is developed by google for the purpose of cloud spanner with some like it will be mostly it will be um, uh, like 60 70 percentage you can see everything closely associated with how actual cloud sql works only 10 20 percentage there will be some syntax change because of that uh, horizontal scalable like horizontal scaling you know because of that we will have some uh, changes while in our query so all those things we will be seeing here 
and you can go through the sample DDL statements, all those things, alter tab, database, create table, alter table, drop table, create index, all those things and schema, the data model and what are the different data types. So array, boolean, bytes, date, float 64, int 64, numeric, string, struct, timestamp. So if you see here, there is no var care or uh, all those things here. And schema and data model, primary keys, table interleaving. So what is table interleaving? What is foreign keys, primary keys? So what is table interleaving? It's a good choice for many parent-child relationship where the child table primarily take primarily key primary key includes the uh, parents tables primary key column so table interlink when we have many parent child relationships we have to make sure of this uh, use of this table interleaving we will be using this concept here in our uh, this demo we will be using this table interleaving and primary key concept also all those things things we will be using uh, in this demo as well so on schema update you can go through this also to up, how, how you can update schema like using cloud sql like command line tool client libraries rest api and uh, database ddl so you can use these things um, and you can have some practice also so how to make this you know, you always you can go through this documentation page to make um, the most of it so now we will see how to create a table so i'll be creating a table called patient P A T I E N T patient and my cost column name will be patient underscore ID and in 64 next is patient name that will be string and it will be 100 and the primary key will be patient ID so this will be my primary key and it looks good now we'll click and if you wanted to encrypt data and if you wanted to pass the customer manage encryption key you you can pass this or else by default google will take care of this by google encryption key so just create click on this create table it is loading it will create the table uh, and the most important feature no for creating the uh, cloud span instance usually when we are doing it in um, uh, in our data center it will take around seven minutes nine minutes or more than 10 minutes uh, in worst case but when when you see this cloud spanner create instance so it just took less than 30 seconds to create a to create the spanner instance that is how how fast our cloud spanner is and we have created a table uh, that is patient and you can create table if you wanted to create table you can click here and you can pa uh, you can directly get the uh, you can directly write the query here or if you wanted you can directly click on this write ddl you can click on this write ddl also again it will you can come here and then create a table so this table is the table name is appointment and it takes appointment id that is int 64 next one is patient table patient patient id in 64 so we will be joining these two tables based on the patient id column and the next thing is physician name so that will be string and 100 so our primary key here will be patient id followed by appointment id so here the important concepts comes here that is we'll be using interleave in parent what is the parent column table name is patient so we'll be using this interleave interleave in parent patient that is our patient uh, uh, parent column and when we'll be using on delete casket so whatever we delete in this patient column automatically uh, that record will be get deleted in this uh, uh, in this table also in appointment table also interleave in parent patient table on delete cascade
so that syntax was on now you can create a table submit on it uh, it will create the table so you can see that schema is getting updated uh, as for like if you see the schema got updated and this appointment table and interleaved in patient this is our primary table and uh, uh, now we will see how to insert columns into this uh, values into this uh, patient as well as appointment first we will open that patient call table followed by we will be opening uh, um, appointment so this is the patient column uh, patient table this is our primary table now we wanted to add data to it so just click on this data and you can see what is the schema here schema is in 64 string 100 nullable yes yes order ascending so what is the name patient and there is no recent update in the schema so you can see or you can get the equivalent ddl also so this is the equivalent ddl so this is how i got this equivalent ddl an interleaved table so if you wanted to add few more tables also you can add it here that interleaved table is appointment table where patient id is the primary column and followed by appointment id and physician id uh, if you want you can add more table to this parent table also patient table as well so now we will see what this index like if you wanted you can create index also now we will see how to insert values to, to this table so now click on this insert values and I'll copy whatever I have created here so I'll just insert into and values oh. so you just it's it's very simple it's very straightforward so insert into patient patient ID what is the patient ID um, so uh, insert into patient patient ID and patient name and values is one is my patient ID second uh, followed by the name name of the patient just you can click on this and uh, you will get a valid button a valid and green uh, check mark so that you can see that um, you can see our uh, query is correct and it will get executed so it is taking some time So it is taking some time. I don't know why it usually takes. Maybe I'll not copy this query. I'll try to execute it. I'll try to write and show to. I'll uh, try to write and show you here itself so that it will not. We will not face that problem. So patient ID and followed by name. I'll use some other name so uh, Ajit to EJ and three Surya. So these are the columns. Now, if you see, we can just if you see, you know that valid came here, and we will just trigger on this. Click on this running query, and you can see three rows inserted. If you wanted to execute the table just click select on this select star from patient table and you can see the three rows similarly the same way we will be doing it for uh, uh, here also if you insert values in this uh, appointment table as well so we will just uh, see what is that what is what here if you see uh, pay appointment id will be 100 and the patient id is 1 and the respective physician is uh, uh, Kaula, I guess. Then, so doctor ID that is appointment ID will be 101, and that patient 2 will be missing the doctor uh, mm, GCP, followed by third patient and you will be seeing the first doctor itself so these are the physician names you can just execute it click on this and try executing it and you can see three uh, three rows got inserted just run this query and we will be seeing what are the three records so if you wanted to delete or if you wanted to uh, alter if you wanted to uh, delete update all those things we can do it from the uh, 
uh, from here from this query itself so for now i'll just close this and i again uh, this, since patient id is our primary column right just i'll open this i'll try to edit it or i'll delete it i'll delete one record we will see how that is impacting this um, just go here write ddl click on this write ddl and click on this drop column or we'll see drop alter table patient drop column name so patient name uh, we'll drop this patient name and we will see how it is going to so if you see here right uh, patient table name and if you see only patient id is there and the patient name is got dropped so similarly if you wanted to add table you can add it and show equivalent and i wanted to show you other things also like if you wanted to edit so patient id if you wanted to edit you can edit and if you wanted to delete few uh, one record no so same way whatever the record uh, whatever the patient id one no you can see that same uh, you can see that has been dropped in the appointment table as well so this is my appointment table and uh, just click on this data so if you see no only 101 that is patient id 2 is there patient id 1 has two doctor a uh, two physician name one is uh, two uh, 102 and 103 with the physician name as caller so all that record got deleted so uh, apart from that you can see uh, monitoring uh, you can see how the monitoring uh, monitoring of cloud uh, cloud spanner so it is shown recommended maximum per instance should be less than 65 percentage so you should always keep this in the mind this is a uh, basic line you should understand before creating any cloud spanner instance and key visualizer and query statistics all those things we will be using key visualizer and i'll be talking more about that key visualizer in the next coming upcoming session so i'll talk more about that key visualizer all those things and you can find the query stats all those things from here and monitoring and if you wanted to export data no i, I as i told you like while well, export you you can export using a cloud console or you can export it from <coughs> using cloud data flow so if you wanted to export you can click on this export data and you can just click on the destination and pick some bucket uh, I'll, I'll click on this bucket i'm not going to execute it but i'll just show you how to do it just click on this bucket demo folder and next so the database which i wanted to export similarly for this i have only one database so i'm choosing that database and region where the database should be so it is in asia east one and next and you can go through this pricing info if you want and then you can click on this export button so you can do those things and again you can create backup and you can restore whenever you wanted to restore no after nine days or after 10 days or you can delete it or you can drop the data itself and um, once you learned uh, once you export this cloud uh, cloud spanner instance no make sure you delete the instance at the end of this session at the end of that session but uh, because i'm because it will be continuously charging for our right so i'm uh, i'll delete this instance at uh, the end of that instance like my videos come my videos completed so i'm deleting this instance similarly i recommend you also to delete an instance whenever it is possible because it takes only less than three minutes like 30 seconds to create an instance and i have attached a, a resource uh, the decent uh, important links to understand the cloud spanner in detail you can go through this and uh, definitely it will help you in a better way i hope you learned uh, something from this video and that's it for today's video uh, if you have any questions or any doubts please don't forget to post in the comment session i'll take a look at it and reply as soon as possible in upcoming sessions we will be seeing other google nosql database products like big table cloud data store memory store uh, stay, stay tuned for those videos uh, please do follow and comment subscribe and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to cloud and ai analytics and don't forget to click on the bell icon um, i'll meet you in the next video with interesting materials with interesting uh, new videos on different gcp products until then it's bye from vignesh happy learning